I'm Lisa Hansford. Um, I work at Friends of the Castle and I'm the executive director there. It's a very well-kept secret. Even as a therapist, I didn't know that the castle existed. The parents who started it didn't want the people to know about it because they didn't want the not in my backyard stigma. We want to normalize that, <laughs> that, that which is not normal. You can walk around the castle and the castle grounds, have your own conversation with those voices in your head, and nobody flinches. You're accepted. We want to normalize that. And we want people who have that stigma on them to feel more comfortable going out in society and going out as a group and um, being accepted is a lot easier than going out individually. Ironically, our, what our members like to do is shop. <laughs> so they're kind of normal in that sense. <laughs> One of the other things they really adore is going camping. We take them camping every year. And we've even taken them zip lining. They go zip lining, they go swimming, they have arts and crafts, they have a campfire every night. And for some of them, that's the only vacation that they get. And they love it. I had a gal tell me who went zip lining with schizophrenia. She gets off of the zip lining and she says, if I can do that, I can do anything. And she went to Paris with her sister. And prior to that, she had trouble coming out of the house. And a couple months later, she passed away in her sleep. And I feel like she had accomplished what she needed to in life. It's the power of connection. Some of them have never had any connections never had any relationships, never had anyone look at them any other way than they're odd and possibly scary. Run the gamut as to how people are going to respond, um, how well they're going to respond. We had one gal who came in and she was nonverbal. She didn't make eye contact and she would was just completely in her head and she would rock and we invited her to join us for lunch because we make lunch every day and we offer breakfast in the morning and a snack in the afternoon. And for me, I think that food is, has a lot of power. So we invited her to come and have a chair meal with us and eventually she did. And long story short, she ended up running a group there at the castle on um, creative writing, and now she works part-time at a fast food restaurant in the drive-thru. Making that connection can be life-changing. I'm super excited that we are coming up on our 30th anniversary. I'm very super excited, uh, especially coming through the pandemic. Um, some of the nonprofits didn't make it through. Some of the businesses didn't make it through. We had some changes that we had to go through because we saw a drop in donations. Um, we saw a drop in food donations. We saw a drop in volunteers, which was really difficult. And we ended up losing both of our co-founders, which was really difficult. And um, we also ended up losing some of our major funders. There's a lot of ways to get involved with what we're doing. We need volunteers. We have a lot of churches that help us with donations for food, but we always need that. We receive some money because we are state licensed as a mental health facility. So we receive some money from the um, Adamus board, the levy money, but we only get about 30% of our revenue from there. The rest is from grants and donations. October the 11th, 1993, we opened our doors in Main Street in Centerville. And I'm ex beyond over the moon that we've made it this far and that we've worked with so many people and brought them to where 
they can be the best them that they can be.